Today I am going to show you how to master the new strand subclass on your hunter. Although this is a hunter build, some of the things that I will be showing today also apply to warlocks and titans. I am going to cover how strand interacts with different buffs, debuffs and exotics. Like for example, being able to go invisible when destroying a tangle, how you can get an infinite amount of super energy from our combo, taking advantage of volatile rounds and overshields, as well as advanced tips and tricks that will help you in enjoying this subclass far more than what you expected. The gameplay in the background is going to be me in a legend weekly mission while being 30 levels below recommended, so technically harder than a grandmaster. I am also streaming on Twitch while using this build, so if you want to see how I personally use it live or have any questions, then you can find me there. The main feature of this build is the ability to survive anything while ditching out big damage and swinging everywhere. What's going to help us in achieving this is our exotic helmet Assassin Cowl. This wonderful exotic provides you with a heal as well as makes you invisible every time you kill an enemy with your empowered melee. Our slink melee combo counts as empowered, which means that it will make us invisible. This effect also works when you are finishing enemies, so if you are out of position or about to die, you can easily go for a finisher to heal up and reposition. However, Assassin's Cowl is not the only thing that's going to allow us to play like a tank, because we also have a ton of damage reduction in this build. Starting off with Woven Mail, which provides us with a whooping 60% damage reduction, and all we have to do in order to activate this is pick up an Herb of Power. Next up we have Void Overshields which provide a 50% damage reduction as long as it is active. The way that we are going to be getting infinite overshields is thanks to a perk called Repulsor Brace, which you can get on Void Guns like the Unforgiven or Harsh Language. We obviously can't forget about the damage reduction from Resilience, that being 30%. And lastly, we have the new debuff called Sever, which makes our enemies deal 20% less damage. All of this would end up giving you around 80% damage reduction, which is an insane amount. And this doesn't even take into account the chest resist mods that we can also use. So in summary, we have crazy high damage resistance combined with the ability to heal up and go invisible on melee kills, as well as all the slinging and mobility in the world. Let's move on to the damage side of the build. Your starter move, the one that you will always want to use to begin your fights, is the sling melee combo. All you have to do in order to activate this move is press your melee mid-air while you're somewhat close to your enemies. Also, if you happen to run into this problem where instead of doing the slash, you end up throwing your charged melee, then I would suggest going into your settings and making sure that you have your charged melee and uncharged melee keybinded to two different inputs. While you are flying towards your target, all you have to do is spam your uncharged melee keybind, which in my case, I have it set to my V key. However, you do have to wait about a second before you can do the melee move, so if you try to grapple too close to an enemy, you won't be able to do it. Keep in mind that this can also be used when there are no enemies close by and you can spam it infinitely, regardless of your actual melee being ready or not. Once you perform the combo and kill an enemy with it, you will spawn an orb of power. This orb of power is very important because it activates a lot of buffs and interactions in this build. Apart from the woven mail that we already covered, this orb of power will activate volatile rounds for your void energy weapons, at the same time, you will also get grenade energy when picking up these orbs thanks to innervation. Lastly, we have our tangles, which will create a massive explosion that also suspends targets when we break them with a strand weapon. And that is thanks to our seasonal mods Untangler and Threaded Blast. However, there is so much more to these tangles as they also work as a grapple point and you can grapple to them infinitely. Here is also a little secret that nobody knows, when using the seasonal mod Untangler, your tangles will count as an empowered melee when you destroy them with a strand weapon. This means that they proc perks like Golden Tricorn, Swashbuckler or in our case Assassin's Cowl. Meaning that when you destroy a tangle with a strand weapon and get a kill, you will go invisible and get healed up. So as you can see, 
The Tangles are a very important aspect of this build because you can choose to destroy them or use them as a free anchor that doesn't consume grenade energy. But if you have grenade kickstar equipped, you can simply grapple a bunch of times to one of the grappling anchors that you create and this will end up giving you more grenade energy since grappling to those is free and it also activates grenade kickstar each time you do it. Now before we get any deeper, I want to give a quick shout out to Apex Gaming PCs which I have worked with to make my own personal PC line which is now available for you guys to check out. You can customize the PCs as you please and remember you can also use my discount code TREY for up to $250 discount. Let's get into the actual mods and fragments that we are going to be using with this build. In the artifact you want to pick authorized mods, strand, void and grenades as well as volatile flow, untangler and threaded blast. For our aspects we have widow's silk which is going to give you a second charge of your grenade as well as is going to create a grapple tangle at your grapple point. You can grapple to this grapple tangle infinitely. Then we have ensnaring slam, which is going to allow you to activate your air move to consume your class ability. This basically is a dive that when you hit the ground, it suspends all targets. And this is also very good because it counters unstoppables. For our fragments, we have thread of warding, which is the one that's going to give us woven mail after we pick up an orb of power. Then we have Thread of Generation, which is going to generate grenade energy every time we deal damage. This is absolutely insane, it gives you a ton of grenade energy. Thread of Isolation is going to allow you to sever your enemies by landing rapid precision hits. Finally, we have Thread of Continuity, and this is basically going to extend the duration of Suspense, Unravel and Sever. Because we apply all three of these, we might as well also extend them. Mod wise, we are going to be using Ashes to Assets and Hands On, and this is going to give us super energy every time we get a kill with our grenade and our melee. Now, luckily for us, our grapple melee combo counts as grenade as well, that's why we get more energy thanks to Ashes to Assets. I'm also using Void Siphon in case I want to spawn an orb or two with my Void weapons. On our gauntlets, we are using impact and action, which is going to reduce our grenade cooldown every time we use our melee. We are also using grenade kickstar for that extra grenade energy whenever we use it. And then heavy handed so we can actually generate an orb of power with our melee. On our chest plate, we are using charged up, which is going to increase the maximum number of stacks of armor charge that we can have by one. I am also pairing this up with melee damage resistance because we are very close to enemies most of the time and Concussive Dampener because it reduces the area of effect damage like grenades and boss stomps. On our leg armor, we are using stack on stacks, which is going to give us an extra stack of armor charge whenever we pick up an orb of power. This means that we get two stacks of armor charge every time we pick up one orb of power. We are also combining this with Innervation, which is going to give us grenade energy whenever we pick up an orb of power, and with Void Weapon Surge, that way our Void Weapons can deal extra damage. Finally, on our cloak, we have Font of Restoration, which is going to give you three tiers of recovery as long as you have armor charges. Time dilation is going to increase the time it takes for your armor charges to decay. And finally, Proximity Ward is going to give you a powerful overshield when you're performing your finisher. This is going to guarantee that you do not die during your finisher regardless of what happens. The way you want to play this build is by starting your rotation with the grapple melee combo. You usually want to make a grapple point somewhere where you can use it multiple times. For example, in this room I made a grapple point in the middle so I could swing and spam my melee ability as much as I wanted. However, if you don't create a grapple point and simply grapple straight towards your enemy, this is also perfectly fine because you will be getting your grapple back in no time thanks to this setup. Once you get a kill with your grapple melee, you will spawn an orb of power that will further empower you and your weapons with woven mail and volatile rounds. Using a weapon with repulsor brace, it's highly recommended but not mandatory. And that's about it. Don't be afraid to grapple everywhere, even on your teammates, and experiment with this build because it is tons of fun. As always, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.